morning and welcome to the core connection i'm mira rubin and this is the um <laughs> this is the core connection going live on enlightened world network and uh today's topic is wisdom so um before we get started digging into what distinguishes knowledge from wisdom uh and vice versa. Let's just take a minute or two to get settled in and present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen just flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing your cells, nourishing your organs. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, any stress, toxicity, negativity. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine crystalline, brilliant, bright light just lighting you up from the inside out, bringing energy and vibrance throughout your body, all your molecules, all your electrons. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, toxicity. And now let's just gently press our palms together really softly let's rub our fingers against our palms feeling that tingling and the tickling and that wonderful sensation and bring yourselves present right here right now so today's topic is wisdom and uh, i want to read the um the definition of actually of wise uh, because wisdom is the the presence of or, or the um, embodiment of being wise. So wise says having the power of discerning and judging properly as to what is true or right, possessing discernment, judgment or discretion and characterized by or showing such power, judicious or prudent. Good morning, Susan, wonderful to have you here. Wisdom, indeed, possessed of or characterized by scholarly knowledge or learning, learned, erudite, having knowledge or information as to facts and circumstances. So, um, interesting there's an archaic good morning Rosalind. there's an archaic definition of wisdom that is um having knowledge of magic or witchcraft very interesting i didn't know that and uh so let's let's talk about wisdom and and i think it goes beyond knowledge i think that wisdom is actually despite the definition, a synthesis of knowledge. And Susan says, fe asks feeling. Well, I, I appreciate that you said that, Susan, because I think that there is an inner knowing instinct. What you're saying is intuition also, that there is a wisdom to our gut feeling, you know, that we can, we can, uh, tap into an innate wisdom that uh, that resides beyond our conscious awareness, and when we when we talk about being wise again, I want to go back to this notion of synthesis. And a lot of times, the the thing that spurs our gut feeling or our our sense of intuition or our instinct is this synthesis that occurs on an other than conscious level where um where we've put things together but but in such a way that it escapes our our um reasoning that it escapes our conscious awareness because what happens is we we perceive things on so many levels that are often not even 
recognized consciously. You know, we're we're picking up all kinds of micro impressions of things, and those things are all being put together internally and often result in this instinct or intuition. So Susan says in a group, feeling I'm in the wrong place, um, doubt, that is hardest. I pray for wisdom. So yeah, when, when we have a deeper connection, it always comes back to having a deeper connection with ourselves and a deeper presence and, and awareness. <clears throat> Good morning, Dido. Great to have you here as always. Uh, we're talking about wisdom today. And, and when we have that deeper connection with self, um, and I mean self with a capital S, our, our, our deeper knowingness, that is a source of wisdom. And what we're talking about is how wisdom goes beyond knowledge because it takes a greater context into consideration, consciously or otherwise. So I, I see wisdom as circumspect, as, as being able to embody a fuller view, a more comprehensive perspective. Now, um, let's see, conscious question says, what wisdom is lost in knowledge? What knowledge is lost in information? Reminds me of the quote. It's a question and a statement. What wisdom is lost in knowledge? What knowledge is lost in information? I agree. So you're you're putting together, thank you for that. You're putting together sort of a hierarchy of awareness. So there's information and then a synthesis of information evolves into knowledge. And then a synthesis of knowledge evolves potentially, hopefully, into wisdom. So uh, wisdom occurs to me as going beyond knowledge in that it's synthesizing a greater context. When we talk about wisdom for transformation of the planet, for instance, we, we get to look not only at, at practices that would make a difference, but we get to look at the, uh, the, the human factor and how, how that plays in to the circumstances. And we get to synthesize information from many, many different areas. And it's through that that generative synthesis that we arrive at wisdom, I believe. Rosalind says, I'm working on something. I am in ask and research mode. It's like I'm gathering puzzle pieces and identifying the outside edges, seeing where similar colors will fit in the puzzle. Haven't even found the corners yet. Rosalind, I just love that description. And I think that that's so much of, of what life is about. Welcome, Crystal. Great to have you here. Uh, let's, when you say, Rosalind, that you're working on something, is it related to this notion of wisdom? Or is, is that the description for you of wisdom? Is, is being in this ask and research mode? I think the ask and research mode is a huge support for synthesis because when we're in the ask and research mode, we're able to remain open to possibility. I think when you get all the corner pieces, the puzzle becomes confined and constrained and the, or the answers become confined and constrained. And I love that you talk about seeing where similar colors will fit in the puzzle, because I can imagine that this, in relation to wisdom, that the puzzle is ever growing 
And uh, by, by finding the similar colors, we get to build it from the inside out perhaps. And, and from the, the different areas that then ultimately start fitting together. Um, but I, I wonder if perhaps it's possible for the puzzle to have no, no absolute edges, you know, for the puzzle to keep emerging. And that's, that's kind of uh, such a beautiful, beautiful way to uh, express what life is as an emerging puzzle, as an emergent image, you know, where, where all these disparate pieces over time seem to fit together better and better. At least that's, that's my experience is seeing how uh, things from experiences from the past have brought me to this, this moment, have, um, have brought me to this current perspective and how the similar colors seem to align with, with each other and, and the other colors ultimately. And, um, you know, I haven't, I haven't put a puzzle together in quite some time, but the way that I've gone about it is very much what you're talking about is identifying the outside edges. And um, I, I wonder if we can identify the outside edges and still allow the puzzle to expand beyond them. You know, that maybe maybe those edges are, are parts of a bigger puzzle that um, we get to keep expanding into. I, I, um, I, I like problem solving and, you know, like puzzles and challenges and, and I, I like finding solutions. I, I had taught myself algebra in high school as, a, um, as an independent study. And, you know, having these, these logic problems put together um, and, and figuring them out and, and puzzling them through was always very rewarding and fun. And um, I, I, I wonder if the wisdom comes not just from putting the puzzle together, but, but having a recognition of the process and what the process of putting that puzzle together actually entails and then moving beyond that to seeing the, um, the, the ramifications of the puzzle, you know, so to create this bigger context again in which the puzzle resides. And hello, Elaine, wonderful, wonderful to see you too. I'm glad to have you here. All of you, it's wonderful to be together and, and share these musings on, on uh, life. So when we talk about wisdom, there's, there's kind of a quantum jump that I believe we can take from just knowledge. So knowledge is being able to recite facts, but not necessarily knowing or understanding the greater ramifications of those facts um, and, and the impact of them and the import of them. So wisdom is discernment. Wisdom is, is judgment. And what it, in the definition was characterized as good judgment. And I wonder what we talk a lot about judgment and releasing judgment. And yet we navigate the world by making constant judgments or course corrections or adjustments. 
And so when we talk about wisdom, what is the judgment that, that distinguishes wisdom from knowledge? I, I think that perhaps it transcends our um, our opinions to to connect with the the deeper knowingness that we have that that we get to trust that broader awareness that synthesizes all the micro impressions all the uh, micro information that bypasses our conscious awareness. Hello, Tammy. Welcome, welcome. Great to have you here. So I'm thinking about wisdom, and I think the, the thing also that may distinguish wisdom is that it goes beyond time. So in this particular moment, if I bring wisdom to a particular circumstance, if any of us bring wisdom to a particular circumstance, that wisdom is a product of life and of our many experiences that we, that we draw from in order to make some kind of assessment or evaluation. I, it, I'm thinking of the quote from a song and I don't remember which song it was. Maybe one of you will remember this. I was so much older then, I'm younger than that now. Um, if for instance, kids, teenagers, myself included, when I was a teenager, I knew a whole lot more than I know now, uh, so many years later, because uh, I had so much more certainty about things, uh, and arrogant certainty about things uh, when I was a lot younger. And as I've grown in years and wisdom, I hope um, things are not anywhere nearly as black and white as they were. And uh, conscious question, I, I'm not sure who you are, what your name is. I, maybe you'd share it. I think you've shared it before, but I've forgotten and I apologize for that. So uh, conscious question says, we have memories from before our lifetimes in our DNA. It's part of our foundation. Things resonate from before our current vessel. And, and, you know, whether we believe in past lives or not, I agree with you 100% that we, we do, our blood carries memory, our cells carry memory. And when we are birthed of our parents, there is a certain, it may not be specific memory. Sometimes it is people have specific memory, but um, we have we have a codification, I believe. And again, working hypothesis, uh, we have a codification of information in our in our physiology and in our consciousness as well. So um, I've, I've heard so many really interesting stories about people, particularly in India, because um, in India, past lives are such a, an integral part of the culture that, that it's, there's a greater opening for expression around past lives. And I've read stories about children who have had such vivid recall of their previous lives that they remembered the household where they grew up and the family that they grew up with. And, and when someone 
uh, died at a young age. They actually, when they came back as a child or when they came into the world as a child with these memories, they went and met their previous family. And I don't know what the explanation is of this. I don't know if it's past lives or if there's a concurrent consciousness that encompasses everything, um, but remarkable stories of waking into this life with memories of another and um, another experience. So I, I don't know how all of it works. I don't, again, working hypothesis, I don't believe that time is linear. You know, I kind of have this notion that it all exists all at once in this moment. And um, with multiple dimensions and multiple timelines and all that fun stuff. And so where, where does wisdom come in for this? I think just an example of what I'm gonna step out and call wisdom is recognizing my beliefs as working hypotheses rather than beliefs. I mean, rather than truths. You know, I'm, I may operate as though they are truths for me. However, I, I believe, <laughs> again, hypotheses that, that um, that if there is a truth with a capital T, it's not something that we get to access. The closest the closest we can come to accessing the capital T truth, I believe, is through connection with that deep internal knowing, the, the presence that we are, that we have the capacity to access that is beyond time, beyond space, beyond identity, beyond beliefs, that is, that is this all, all knowing all, being presence but um so back to oh so elaine says wisdom for me is the ability to follow our own intuitive process in alignment with healthy choices as i follow inner guidance i see true wisdom is for the good of all yes divine orchestrated perf perfectly and alignment with all life expressions simultaneously in the now that's so beautifully said, Elaine. I want to read it again. Wisdom for me is the ability to follow our own intuitive process. And that's what we've been talking about and how that intuitive process actually is a very intelligent synthesis of the influences in our environment that often go beyond our, our conscious awareness in alignment to follow our own intuitive process in alignment with healthy choices as i follow inner guidance i see true wisdom is for the good of all that's beautiful that true wisdom is for the good of all so that's what we're talking about here in terms of the broader perspective the broader awareness of the interplay of many, many, many different aspects of something. And this goes beyond thought. Oftentimes the, the wisdom that we are able to access guides us differently than our conscious, rational thinking might. In many cases, it does guide us differently. And that's because our rational thought is not as expansive, is not able even to perceive consciously so much of what is impacting the internal intuitive wisdom. And Elaine continues to say, I see true wisdom is for the good of all. Yes, divine orchestrated perfectly in alignment with all life expressions simultaneously in the now. That's spectacular, just really beautifully said. 
So I thank you for that, Elaine. I think we're all grateful to you for that uh, very, very eloquent and wise expression. So when we're talking about wisdom, it occurs to me that in order to be responsive and receptive to our inner guidance, there is a place of not knowingness that we get to access in order to hear or feel or sense the answers that may come from that deeper that deeper place and that deeper awareness so to be in the not knowing open space for that wisdom to come through and um on that note I, I think that that's probably a good place to wrap up unless anybody has anything else to contribute here. You've done such a beautiful, beautiful job today in, um, in sharing so eloquently and beautifully and wisely. And, and I'm just really, really grateful for that. So I'm Mira Rubin, this is The Core Connection. And I go live each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page at 9 a.m. Eastern. And this is Maggie, and we're a team. She's just a, sort of a, say hi, Maggie. Say good, say goodbye to everybody. There you go, say, there's Maggie. She's doing her one foot dance. And um, I just, I just so appreciate you and, and this opportunity to think through some of these things, uh, uh, these questions and curiosities about life. So until next time, tap into your heart and your deepest knowing and move from the wisdom that you innately are. Lots of love. <laughs>